what our mail game boys here and of course we're going to be in front of the camera talking about the new KWA goodies because I'm such a KWA fanboy and right in front of me here is the beautiful new KWA RM4 Q10. I would say the overall theme of the Q10 is going to be rugged, simple, and utilitarian. You're going to hear me say these words a lot when I talk about this gun because uh, that's just the overall gist I get when I handle, shoot, and hold this Q10. Uh, just right off the bat, when you hold this thing, it feels absolutely rock solid. It feels like one piece of metal, and that's something that I come to expect with a premium brand like KBWA. They do have, uh, I guess, like a legendary reputation for the really high build quality of their airsoft guns. And starting off, you do get a very nice traditional forge style metal upper and lower receiver group, which again, feels absolutely rock solid. And paired with that, KWA has given us, uh, I guess you would say like a traditional quad rail of sorts. It, it kind of gives me like a, in between like a 416 and a Mark 18 style vibe. Uh, if you just look at the design of the quad rail itself, uh, there's nothing really fancy about it. Very utilitarian and rugged. And of course, with Picatinny being one of the most universal mounting styles when it comes to accessories, you can pretty much put whatever accessories you want on the front end. Talking a bit more about the front end here of the Q10, uh, KDWA has given us about like a 10.5 inch outer barrel setup, which is an extremely common barrel length for Airsoft M4s, just because it's a happy middle ground between outdoor and indoor field. It can do both pretty well. And uh, talking a bit more about the handguard system, I I'm, I'm a little, I don't want to say disappointed. I'm just a little intrigued as to why KWA has given us a quad rail instead of an M-Lock handguard because in my opinion, I think KWA does a pretty good job at giving us pretty nice looking M-Lock handguards. So I don't know why they went with the Picatinny option instead this time. My guess is probably because they developed the Q10 specifically for military and law enforcement training in mind. So maybe those clients of theirs do not necessarily run M-Lock furniture. So maybe uh, that was a consideration there. I'm not really sure, but in traditional KW fashion, they have given us a very clean, nice metal anodized orange uh, tip on the front instead of like a cheap plastic one or obnoxiously painted one. So uh, very tastefully done in traditional KW fashion. And uh, also towards the rear of the handguard, you do get a right and a left hand side QD sling attachment point. So if you want to run a QD sling, no problems there. And just like a lot of the other high-end KWA guns out there, they do include a lot of really good PTS goodies out of the box for you, which in my opinion gives you a lot of value. So on the front and the rear, they do give you the nice PTS slim polymer flip-up sights, which look absolutely clean. And you do get my one of my favorite AEG pistol grips to date is going to be the PTS EPGC. I just love the angle of the EPGC and it just feels really nice in the hands when you're shooting it. And they do give you their ambidextrous selector. I'm not a huge fan of ambidextrous selectors. And in my opinion, I think that the selector that they give you out of the box, especially this polymer one, I'm not sure if it's made by PTS or not, but it's a little bit more on the mushy side. I kind of miss the old days when KWA will give you their own in-house like out of the box metal selector the traditional ar selector it was a lot more clicky and tactile uh, so just my opinion there and uh, moving towards the rear you do get their very nice originally designed ambidextrous charging handle which is good to see uh, and you have an ambidextrous sling loop on the end plate here of the receiver so if you want to mount like a single point sling or have an hk clip uh, style which i prefer uh, you can very much easily do that there and you get your full metal buffer tube set up and this time around instead of giving you a pts stock they have decided to give you their own uh, kidway crane stock with the qd points on the rear and a sling loop uh, as well if you want to just loop your sling around uh, but I think it looks all right again it, it doesn't look super fancy so uh, I think with like the combination of the the rail and the receiver style and also the stock again looks extremely rugged and utilitarian now because this is KWA's recoil style gun you will not have any battery space in the buffer tube itself because that's where the recoil system is housed so if you want to change this stock out for anything else just keep that in mind because this gun is rear wired so you're gonna have to store your battery in the rear of the gun and uh, you might need to get a stock that can house additional battery space because again the buffer tube is not accessible 
uh, but some other interesting quirks and features about the Q10 is that this does have a functioning mock bolt catch uh, so you can adjust your hop up uh, basically with a lot more ease but keep in mind that when you decide to test fire the gun again you have to uh, release the mock bolt in order to have the gun firing because if you leave that bolt release kind of open uh, in the open position it's not going to cycle the gun so just keep that in mind and also finally is going to be the magazine that they include out of the box with your gun this is a kwa ms30 slash 120 so it's a variable capacity magazine so you can switch this from a realistic 30 round magazine or if you just want to play casually at your uh, local airsoft field you could switch the thing at the bottom of the magazine to have it run its full 120 round capacity it does have the nice dimples at the bottom as well for you to mark your magazine uh, and I, I love their nice tasteful like uh, mock dummy bullet window thing which is pretty cool but uh, one thing you realize about this particular magazine is that this is probably not compatible with any other standard airsoft and four out there because of the shape the shape of the magazine they do have this curved fake feeding lip at the top and uh, that is specifically for KWA's recoil M4 style system so just keep that in mind and if you want to retain the bolt the cutoff feature on this gun you will have to purchase more of their ms30 120 magazines let's talk about the internals real quick about the q10 obviously just from shooting this thing it really reminds me a lot about the ronin t10 and that's because they're sharing the same gearbox platform which is kwa's aeg 3.0 gearbox system which has their uh, kinetic feedback system or the recoil system now uh, the only difference between the q10 and the t10 is that the q10 has a mechanical cutoff feature meaning that when you fire the last round in the kwa mag in your gun uh the gun will stop firing and so because of that mechanism uh, the Q10 will not be compatible with any aftermarket ETU like the Gate Titan. So if you want to install something like a Gate Titan into your KWA, which I don't know why you would, I would recommend something more like the T10 instead because of that compatibility. Now, also, uh, this gun is 11.1 volt LiPo already, according to KWA, because they have included their switch life extender and their beefier fuse to handle the high stress of a full-fledged LiPo battery in this thing. And I'd say just running the gun as intended by KWA, it shoots extremely smoothly and it shoots very well. So don't don't change anything. Don't open up the KWA Q10. It'll avoid your warranty and you're probably going to make the gun shoot worse. The only upgrade that I would ever recommend on a gun like a KWA Q10 is to maybe swap out the inner barrel for uh, the Unicorn inner barrel and bucking. It's one of the easiest ways to increase uh, the accuracy and the overall long range performance on this thing remarkably without having to you know, do any crazy aftermarket modification yourself. The KWA RM4 Q10 AG chronos in at 390 to 400 feet per second with the 0.2 gram BB and has a rate of fire of 19 to 20 rounds per second using an 11 one life up. Okay, the moment that I've been waiting for, I had to talk about this gun for so long and haven't even had the chance to shoot it. So now it's time. Let's get some BBs and a battery. Let's go to the test range. All right, we're at the test range here with the beautiful Kitabui Q10 loaded in the mag, our 0.28 gram BBs, a little lighter than my usual preference of BBs, but that's just what we got at the test range, so that's what we're using. Uh, in the buffer tube, or in the stock, I should say, is 11.1 volt LiPo battery, which is what Kitabui recommends with all their high-end AEGs. Uh, we got the target down range, uh, right around like 100, 120-ish feet, so that's like probably your ideal engagement distance for outdoor gameplay, which the uh, Q10 is suited for, since that it shoots around 400 FPS. So I'm just gonna give it a couple shots here. Oh man, the recoil, man. Like every time I shoot this gun, like for the first time, it kind of takes me by surprise. It, it's such a nice feedback. Like it, obviously it's not gonna be as much recoil as let's say like a real life gun or uh, dare I say even a gas blowback, but uh, it's just such a nice, satisfying feedback every time you shoot the gun. You, you really feel like you're doing something. Yeah, I, I will say uh, it is a little bit on the sluggish side just because there's a weight that actually moves back in the buffer tube to give you that recoil, uh, but it is still a lot of fun to shoot. Uh, now I'm just gonna try full auto real quick. <laughs> That's a surprising amount of rate of fire coming out of a recoil gun like the Q10. Uh, I, I probably clock it in close to around 
20 rounds per second. But the real fun factor that really puts a smile on my face, again, is just that recoil. I'm, I'm just gonna dry fire this real quick on, on full auto. <laughs> just the way it, like, it moves around in your hands. is. <laughs> It's so much fun. Uh, but let's go ahead and step back even farther and see what this is capable of doing. So we're back here at around 150-ish feet. I, I don't want to say like it's it's almost close to 200 feet uh, downrange. So this is kind of like at the far end of where you want to be engaging targets at an outdoor field. You know, obviously got the mag loaded back up with point gram BBs. But uh, one of my favorite things, ah, the cutoff feature. Every time you use a KDB way, uh, RM4 magazine, uh, the, the, with the cutoff feature, you have to press the bolt release on this gun to get it to shoot again. I love that feature. Especially when you're out of ammo sometimes, like in the heat of, of airsoft uh, gameplay, but when you're, when you're shooting at your enemy players. Now, sometimes it is a little hard, or you, you kind of notice a bit later when you're out of BBs. You know, you'll be shooting, 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 and then you'll be shooting empty, like maybe five or six shots, and you're like, oh shoot, I'm empty. Uh, but with the cutoff feature, the gun will just stop firing and you're like, oh shoot, now I'm empty. So that's like one of my favorite features here. Uh, but just gonna shoot a couple shots at 150 feet. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, 150 feet, no problem for this guy. As, as a KWA should, as a gun like this should, especially for a gun that is gonna be proprietary and that isn't gonna accept a lot of aftermarket upgrades, of course, of course it should perform that way. I, I'd say the only real upgrade that you probably wanna to do to this thing is get a unicorn inner barrel and hop up bucking combo uh, to instantly maximize the range and accuracy of your gun. I mean, I do that with a ton of my personal guns, especially KWA guns, and they work like a dream. But uh, you know what, I, I kinda of wanna see how this thing go, do, goes with more extreme ranges. Okay, so now with the Q10, we are at around 250 feet away. This is kind of the bleeding edge of where you want to be if you're shooting an AEG. HPA, gas blowback rifle, obviously you can go a bit farther than that, but 250 feet is kind of like, again, that bleeding edge. Like that's kind of where a majority of AEGs kind of bottom out for uh, the range and accuracy. So we're just going to shoot this thing and see if I can land some hits on it. First thing out the gate, very doable. Oh, I hit it once. Yep, there it goes. Yeah, I mean the gun itself, like the BBs themselves, they're they're easily sailing into, they're hitting the bushes. Uh, as far as the man size target goes, uh, obviously not going to be as accurate at this distance. Yeah, but no, no problem. Reaching out to that distance. So I'd say in a string about like 10 shots of aim shots, you, you're gonna get at least a couple hits on the man size target here. There it goes. Yeah. Yeah, even for me, like I'm just walking the BBs in and yeah, no problem at 250 feet. Well, I'm very happy that this thing can reach out to 250 feet considering I'm probably gonna get one of these things. So after coming back from the range test, I wouldn't say that I'm particularly surprised or amazed at the performance of the Q10. It shot exactly how I expect a KDWA gun to shoot. And especially with how fun their kinetic feedback system is, uh, this is kind of one of the reasons why I love KDWA's recoil guns so much, is why I have, I have two of them, probably three coming soon, is just because that on the off season when I don't run a gas blowback rifle and I want a more realistic feeling airsoft gun on the field, uh, it's just such a nice reliable option and I don't have to worry about pouring more money in to upgrade uh, the RM4 series of airsoft guns. It performs very smoothly, like just how the gun shoots, how the gearbox turns and shoots, it, it feels like the gun is in its happy place and uh, you do get the decent amount of range and accuracy to where you don't feel underpowered when uh, competing against other normal AEG players. The trigger response on the Q10 is definitely on par with uh, some of the other guns like the Ronin T10. And that's because, again, they're just pretty much using the same internal components. And I would say that I'm pretty happy with how responsive the gun is. And uh, I'd say like the gearbox for some reason, uh, if you really push it hard enough, 
it will slightly outrun the recoil system. So there is a little bit of a lag just because there is a weight that is just moving back and forth in your buffer tube to give you that uh, recoil feedback. Uh, so that's one thing to kind of look out for. I'm not sure how KW will be able to remedy that issue, uh, especially for a gun that shoots close to 400 FPS. They are using a stiffer spring to move that weight back and forth. So uh, I'm not too sure about that, but 90% of the time when I'm running the gun, uh, I'd say it is a very fun experience and I'm able to uh, shoot as fast as I want to. After it's all said and done and you've seen the Q10 run through its paces and you've seen how it performs and how accurate the gun is, you might wonder how much it costs to own a KWA Q10. Well, as of right now at airsoftgi.com, the KWA RM4 Q10 M4AG retails for $420 and make sure to take advantage of the Wamba Combo for automatic free shipping and reward store credit. $420? Nice. First of all, that, that, that's, a, that's a very nice number to pick out. I mean, it is an expensive airsoft gun, no doubt at all. I mean, for the price of a Q10, you could probably buy at least two or three entry-level Specna guns or, so, uh, or two or three entry-level Lancer Tactical Gen 2 guns. Maybe you can buy one Lancer Gen 3 and, uh, and one entry-level Lancer Gen 2. You know, you can get a lot of airsoft gun for that price point. Uh, but I would say, in particular, the price point at the Q10 is sitting at, I'd say it is, I would say it's it's pretty fair, uh, just because of how well built the Q10 is and KWA's legendary reputation for just keeping the gun reliable, provided you don't open it up, is very reliable and you get pretty consistent performance out of the box. I, I'd say uh, forking over $420 for the Q10 is uh, like an insurance policy. Like if you primary this gun, or let's say you run like a more expensive or more finicky system like me, uh, and let's say the gun goes down or the weather conditions aren't good enough for you to run your uh, primary airsoft gun, having something like the Q10, it just gives you so much peace of mind knowing that every time you plug in a battery, the gun will shoot. And it won't just shoot or shoot well. You'll have a really fun time shooting it because you get the kinetic feedback system. So if you're tired of running a standard AEG, if you're tired of running a sewing machine as your primary, and you want to switch things up when you play and you want a solid and reliable gun that you don't have to open up or uh, tune out of the box, I'd say the Q10 is definitely the way to go. Thank you guys so much for sticking around and checking out our overview of the KWA RM4 Q10. Uh, I'm really hoping that uh, later down the line, KWA will wise up and uh, perhaps release more M-Lock variants or different variants of their RM4 or the AEG 3.0 uh, recoil system. It's a really fun and solid system to use, especially if you want to change up the way you play. Uh, let me know what you guys think down below, uh, specifically about uh, like the recoil systems in AEGs uh, is that something more that you guys would like to see more of uh, should the aftermarket come in and start standardizing uh, something like the AEG 3.0 gearbox you know so that way more companies can uh, start using that system or to improve upon that existing system let me know in the comments down below and if you guys haven't already please make sure to hit the subscribe button as well as uh, liking the video and hitting that bell icon to get notified of every time we upload a new video and if you like the content that you're seeing and you want to support us directly please head over to airsoftgi.com for all your airsoft goodies, including all of Katie Way's latest and greatest airsoft guns. My name is Boaz, and we'll see you next time, Mayo Gang.